Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I post about writing, publishing, and all things to do with books. Today I will be talking about the pros and cons of self-publishing and the difference between self-publishing and traditional publishing. Hopefully this video will be informative for you as a writer to figuring out the path to publishing for your own books. I will be going into the difference between cost as well as your return on investment, the timeline, so the difference in timeline between traditional and self-publishing, genre differences since some books tend to do better with traditional publishing than others, creative control over your book, how much support you have, as well as what are your goals. Whether you choose to self-publish or traditional publish will de largely depend on what your goals are as a writer. So three pros that come with traditional publishing. Traditional publishing is good at getting your book into bookstores, libraries, and in other words, brick and mortar bookstores. It's harder to do this with self-publishing and also with hybrid publishing. So traditional publishing is great for this. If you would like your book to be in bookstores and in libraries, this is the easiest way to get there. Traditional publishing also lets you give up control the same way self-publishing lets you keep control. So if you'd like to just write and have people take care of things for you more so, then traditional publishing might be something you'd like to explore, but we'll go into a bit later about marketing because that's something that a lot of writers don't know. That's something you still have to do no matter how your book is published. And the last thing is that if you traditionally publish your book, then you'll have a team of professionals working on it. So your agent, your publisher, your editor, your book designer, things like that. So you'll be supported in the work that you're doing, in the book that you're writing, and you'll have your project managed for you in that sense. So if your priority is to get your book into bookstores and into the mainstream, and also you would like your project managed, you don't mind giving up the control or creative control over your book, then traditional publishing might be for you. The genres that tend to do best with traditional publishing as of now are children's books or picture books, young adult and middle grade books, as well as literary novels. So if you write in one of these genres, then you might highly consider traditional publishing for your books. All right, so what are the cons or the negatives of traditional publishing? The first one is that it's very slow. It might take years just to find an agent or publisher for your book. And from there, there's still a lot of contracts to be signed and a lot of paperwork to get through. And so it could take years, basically. When you're pitching, querying to agents and publishers, then the response time goes anywhere from 30 seconds to never. So this has to also be factored into your realistic timeline for when you'd like your book to be published. The second con is that you, as I mentioned before, you give up your creative control over your book. So there'll be a team of professionals working on different aspects of your book, and you have to kind of be okay with giving up that control over your book in order to traditionally publish it. The third con is not a very well-known con, and I'll go into it more later. It might be surprising to a lot of writers out there, but the writer is not paid well in the long term. And we'll go into some statistics about this a bit later in the video. But right now I'll just say that writers usually get about 15% of the sales of that book. All those professionals that are working on your book, you know, your agent, and the team of professionals, publisher, all of that, like they need to be paid too. So that's another thing to keep in mind. This works well for writers who write and sell a lot of books like Stephen King, but not so well for writers who just write a book here and there. Here is a graph on the earnings in royalties of traditional published compared to self-published. And you can see that there's a dramatic difference between the two. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Before I get into self-publishing or indie independent publishing, 
I will talk a little bit about hybrid publishing because it's on the rise these days. The best way to describe hybrid publishing is that the writer pays an upfront cost for professionals to work on different aspects of their book in exchange for the publisher's expertise and for royalties. So the main difference here between traditional and hybrid publishing is traditional publishing, the writer doesn't pay anything upfront. There's no cost. They are actually paid in advance when they team up with a publisher. But for hybrid publishing, they pay in advance and it can get pretty expensive, but it might be worth it because they get a higher percentage of the royalties from their book once it is published. You have to be pretty careful with hybrid publishing because there's a big difference in quality between different hybrid publishers. So as a writer, you might want to do your research into different hybrid publishers and make sure that it's something that you would be willing to pay and that you will get more of a return on your investment. Like I said, uh, hybrid publishing can get pretty expensive, so you really want to see where your money is going. All right, so moving into the pros of hybrid publishing, the first one is that writer has more creative control than for traditional publishing. You're working with a team of professionals to make your book come to life the way that you vision it to be. And that moves into pro number two, which is you're working with a team of professionals who have expertise in specific aspects of publishing. A hybrid publisher might contract out different professionals for this, such as editors, book designers, and such so you as the writer don't have to go out and do that on your own you have a team working with you on that and you get to have that creative control the third pro is as i mentioned before the writer gets to keep more or a higher percentage of the royalties once the book is published than with traditional publishing and now the cons are the negative downsides that come with hybrid publishing. Hybrid publishing, as I mentioned before, can be pretty expensive. It can cost a lot of money upfront, sometimes as much as 8,000, 20,000, 30,000, even more than 100,000 sometimes. It all kind of depends on what you are willing to spend as a writer. And different hybrid publishing companies have different rates. So like I said before, you might want to look up these companies and see what you're willing to pay for what you get. The second con is that hybrid publishers may not offer a lot of help with the marketing or the distribution of your book. So traditional publishers are probably the best for this, although as I said, we'll go into later why no option is as ideal as writers hope it. it. No, as writers hope it would be but hybrid publishing less so. Just to be clear, I'm referring to marketing here. Distribution is something that traditional publishing does really well. So that's something to consider. The marketing side really depends on the hybrid publisher. Some hybrid publishers hire out marketing experts and contractors who operate more like a PR firm for the writer. And it might be costly, but it might actually do more for your book than a traditional publisher would, but you're paying a lot upfront for it. So for hybrid publishing, it kind of all depends on how much you're willing to pay. The third con is that hybrid publishing is also slower process, similar to traditional publishing. Now we're moving on to independent, indie, or self-publishing. Self-publishing does well what the other two publishing paths do not and vice versa, as you can imagine. You have complete creative control. You're the one doing everything or you decide whether you do it or whether you hire someone out or contract someone else out to do it. You know, the book exterior, interior, the design, the layout, the title, the price, the formats, you know, whether you want it in digital, print, audiobook, your marketing plan and all of that. And you get to decide everything pretty much. You also make the highest percentage of the profit of the book you sell. So it's just dependent on you and your platform, how much books you can sell. Being a writer myself, I know how much I would like to have creative control over all my projects, but I also know that writers just want to write. They don't want to deal with having to do everything and they want 
that support of a professional looking over their work, helping them guide them through publishing. And that's why I offer full service self-publishing, which is basically what I would have liked to have when I first started publishing. I just guide you as a writer through publishing your book. So it's the balance between you having complete creative control over your book, you know, how you want it to look, be what you want to price it, but then I do the hard detailed work for you by making that happen and guiding you through the process. You could learn more about this offering that I have, full service self-publishing. I will link it down in the description below and feel free to check that out. If you'd like to book a free discovery call to learn more about this offering, then feel free to reach out to me at info at littleredbirdpublishing.com and we will go from there. Now on to the pros of self-publishing. The first pro, as I mentioned before, is that you as the writer get full creative control over your book. You get to decide what you want on the cover, what you want inside, what you price the book, and all of that. The second pro is that you can bring the book to market fast. You can publish it pretty much at any point. For my full service self-publishing offering, I can do this for you under a month. In contrast to traditional publishing, which can take years, hybrid publishing as well, which is very similar. Self-publishing, you can pretty much do it whenever, like however long it takes you to get through everything. So that's a great benefit if you have a book that is very timely. The third pro is that you as the writer get to keep the highest percentage of royalties of earnings from that book. You're not paying royalties out to publishers or other professionals. That's another thing with the full service self-publishing. I've made it so that it's just an upfront cost. There's no royalties or anything like that. So you as the writer get to keep everything that you earn from your book. This is the best way that I as a writer like to work too. Like if I'm contracting out professionals, I will pay upfront rather than pay through royalties. Genres that tend to do the best with self-publishing are for the fiction side, romance, sci-fi, and fantasy. And then on the non-fiction side, memoir, specifically narrative memoir is probably best for self-publishing. And just any kind of like how-to guide book. Self-publishing is also great if you already have a platform as an author and you've figured out the marketing side of things. You already are a professional and you want to share your expertise through a book with your audience or with your clients then self-publishing is the best way to go about this. Most of my full-service self-publishing clients are busy professionals who already have a following, they already have a platform, and they would just like to have that book that they can give to their clients or sell to their clients or point their clients to whenever. But really, anyone could self-publish. And as I mentioned before, marketing is something that writers always need to do no matter what path you're going for. All right now moving into the cons of self-publishing and the first one is that of course the writer has to figure everything out on their own. They have to do all the work, they have to figure out what they will do themselves and what they outsource and then con number two is that yeah writers have to do that themselves so they're paying everything out of pocket. Whether their book does well largely depends on them and what they do for their book and how they promote their book. And then the third con is just that it's harder to get into traditional bookstores or libraries. It's harder to get their book out there in the mainstream. It's not impossible. There's been a lot of books some famous books that have been picked up by publishers or the media, such as The Martian and Fifty Shades of Grey is another one, but this is a lot more rare for self-publishing. There is still a lot of judgment around self-published books. There's very little prestige that comes from independent or self-publishing in the same way that there is for traditional publishing, so that's something to keep in mind as well. People in the industry might assume that your book is not as high quality as a traditionally published book would be. Since anyone could self-publish, there's a wide variety of quality that exists in the self-published book realm. Books aren't vetted the same way as they are in traditional publishing, so that's another thing to keep in mind. The range in quality of books among self-published books is just a lot larger. So now going back to marketing, 
The truth is that no matter how a writer decides to publish, marketing falls mostly on the writer, even if they traditionally publish. And this is something that surprises a lot of writers, but it's just the reality of the industry. So because of this, no matter which path to publishing you choose, as a writer, you always want to be aware of your audience, your ideal reader, who that is, and write to them. This is why it's so important to really think about this as you're writing your books. And this is where book coaching can really come in and help. Planning and then executing the writing of your book with your ideal reader in mind, with that audience who you're going to convey your book to, who's going to love your book, pick up your book, read your book, and promote your book to other readers. Thinking about this even before you go into writing books is a really great way to be ahead of this and to start marketing early on so that you're giving your book the best chance it can to get to as many readers as possible. This is something that I offer as a book coach and I will link down below to my website where you can check it out. Or again, you could just email me at info at littleredbirdpublishing.com and we can have a discovery call to talk about you and your book and your writing and publishing goals. If you are writing a book or you're looking to write a book and you're unsure still which path to publishing would be right for you, then feel free to reach out to me. Part of the free discovery call that I offer includes asking you a series of questions to help you think about what path would be right for your book and help you discern that for yourself. So feel free to email me or book that discovery session using the link on the book coaching page of my website, which again, I will link down below.